And I would also just like to acknowledge the presence of some guests that we have today. First, we have our sister MJ, invited by the panel of group. Welcome, so many, uh, and, uh, welcome. Uh, grateful to have you here. Welcome, you guys here. And of course, we'd also like to acknowledge the presence of some pastors we have from YICF, the National International Christian Ministry. We have Pastor Pablo, we have Pastor Rico, and his wife. Welcome, welcome to my And we are so. Um, we're so grateful to get this chance to worship with you. Amen. Welcome home. And if we're all ready and if we're all settled, uh, we may start. I'll call on Deacon Pablo Gonzalez for our worship. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, before before uh, we start, I would like to share what happened earlier in the morning. Um, actually, um, I'm the one who picked up the visitor from uh, Nepal. Her name, what's her name again? MJ. MJ, so uh, actually I asked permission from uh, Miss MJ that um, I will be the one who will be um, uh, doing the worship leader today. So I asked her permission to use our native language because I could not able to give the maximum um, performance of myself in English language. And the same thing I asked permission from uh, Brother Jose. Sorry, from uh, brother, from our brother, from just brother Daniel. Yes. So before we start, actually I um, nakatagalog na prawa. So ano po? Um, sampu tayo nagsimula. Ano po yung sinabi natin? Ayun, uh, nagsimula po siya sa question, di po ba? So nagprepare po ako dito ng uh, um, maikli po video na uh, may mga question po. Yung mga questions po na yun, ang mga kasagot po na wala kita kung di tayo. Tapos pagkatapos po nun, bibigay po ako ng mga guidance po uh, para po malaman natin kung ano yung mga kasagutan doon o para po yung guidance ng mga katalungan sa preliminary po video. At sana po makatulong din po to sa magiging preaching po ni, ni uh, uh, Pastor. Sira. 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 So, ayan po yung preliminary ko po mga tanong ng para po sa ating lahat. Alam ko po, um, kailan din po mga kasagot yan. Um, uh, Brother Santino, can you please open uh, the PowerPoint? Okay. You can open the next one. So, I just used the same uh, PowerPoint here actually. Um, yung same format ng video, the same na din ng PowerPoint. Expectation you are striving to confirm with our actions and deeds. So, 
Ayan po, ano po ba yung mga conforming natin sa buhay? Ano po ba yung mga sinusundan natin guidelines? Um, dapat po, ang mga guidelines po na sinusundan natin ay hindi po yung mga kumulong bagay. Dapat po, nagka-comply po tayo sa mga utos ng Panginoon Diyos. Umumuhin po tayo dapat sa mga kagustuhan po niya. Ito po, let's go. How much value do you place on your own abilities, talents, qualities? Would you say that you hold yourself in high esteem? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, minsan po ba dumadating po ba sa point na pagka mayroon po kayong achievement, dumadating po ba sa point na sobrang proud po kayo sa sarili nyo? Um, nakikita niyo po ba na mataas yung sarili nyo minsan? Pagka po nakikita niyo po na mataas yung sarili nyo at wala kayo ba nakikita, meron pong mali. Kasi po lahat po ng achievement po natin, lahat ng narating po natin sa buhay, wala ang iba pong dahilan yan, kundi po ang Panginoon Diyos. Amen. So, mag-isip-isip po tayo, kung highly na po yung na-achieve natin, i-assess po natin yung sarili natin, um, pagbulay-bulayan po natin, kung kayo po ba natin inaalay yung mga, yung mga success na natatagang natin sa buhay. Uh, tandaan po natin, dapat po walang ibang pinag-aalayan yan, una-una, dahil lang po, uh, sa Panginoon Diyos lang po. Amen. Amen. So, do you think you are unique? Uh, yes, we are unique actually. So, lahat po tayo, meron po tayong iba't ibang katangian. Uh, hindi po tayo pare-parehas. Meron po tayong iba't ibang kakayahan. So, ayan po. Um, kung iyaan po natin siya, kung i- i-convert po natin siya sa Godly Living, yung pagiging unique po, ay hindi po hindi po natin dapat um, gayahin lang po ano yung nakikita natin. Dapat po, uh, magkaroon po tayo ng sarila nating pamamaraan kung paano po natin ipapakita sa iba na ang pamumuhay natin ay talagang uh, nasa way ng Panginoon Diyos. Are you able to work together with others? Yan. So, kung kanina po sinabi ko yun eh, ngayon po, ayan, ang tinatanong po dito, Are you able to work together with others? Mm -hmm. So, di ba po, pagka po nasa Panginoon Diyos tayo, nasa church po tayo, ibang, isang body po tayo, pero iba't iba po tayong, uh, iba't ibang klaseng tao po tayo. So, syempre po, hindi naman po natin ma-achieve yung dapat natin i-achieve kung mag-isa lang po tayo. So, dapat po, um, lagi po tayong able to work together with other people. Amen. Yan po. Are you willing to share your gifts? Katulad nga po sinabi ko kanina, um, lahat po tayo unique, mayroon po tayo sa sariling kakayahan, kasama po dyan yung mga gift na nakagam natin sa Panginoon Diyos. Katulad po ng mga example po si, um, si asawa ko, magaling mata, sila po namin sa dito. Um, dapat po, gamitin lang po ngayong gift niya uh, para po sa itigagaya ng Panginoon Diyos. Amen. Okay. Tulad po nung uh, buti po natin pastor, um, every Every year po, naririnig po namin siya, paano po siya mag-preach, talaga pong sobrang galing po niyong masipta. At talaga pong maramdaman po namin presensya ng presensya ng Panginoon Diyos pagka po siya na yung nasa araw. Praise God. So sana po, um, in the near future, magkaroon din po ang sarili ng same gift. Sana po. Amen. 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 Don't worry about it. I will get it straight away. I will try. I will try my best to speak in English next time. <laughs> Do you have genuine love for whom? So yung tinatanong dito, pero ba tayo yung genuine love sa para kay Nino? Yan. Siyempre yung genuine love natin. Kung wala tayong genuine love para sa Panginoon Diyos, wala tayong magagawang mabuti. Maaaring magkaroon tayo ng achievement, pero kung yung achievement na yun, walang, walang laman na pagkabuti o walang uh, laman na magandang intensyon para sa Panginoon Diyos, bali wala lang din yun. So, lagi natin tandaan na pag may genuine love tayo pa sa ating Panginoon Diyos. Right. Would you rather prioritize the needs of others before yours? Yan. So, ayan po. Madalas po, nakikita po natin um, yung mga pastor po natin, yung mga elder natin, o yung iba pong mga members natin dito sa church. Um, imbis po na na unahin po po nila yung sarili nila, pinutulangan po nila yung mga kasamahan po natin dito na 
alam niyo na po yung ang tulad ko po, wala na yun po, wala akong sasakyan. So, yung mga kapatid lang po natin na may sasakyan, dami po po siya pinakatid sa nulo. Minsan nga po, ang pumapasok po sa isip ko, talagang ayaw ko magpasang nulo. So, ako po, kahit wala na po masahe, mga masahe ko. Kasi, parang, ang tawag doon, uh, gusto ko yung laging prayer ng Panginoon Diyos na araw na ng Panginoon Diyos yung effort ko para pagpunta sa Panginoon. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Are you passionate? You know yeah. Um, yeah po, yung passionate po na sinasabi dito, di ba po tayo dito sa church, meron po tayo sa Raysalini Ministry. Yung sa Raysalini Ministry po natin, kung di po tayo passionate o wala po tayong uh, passion sa ginagawa natin, um, parang maliwala lang din po. So dapat po, pagka para sa Panginoon ng Diyos, dapat po talaga so passionate natin. Di ba po, pagka sinabi yung passionate, nandiyan po lahat mo dito sa bilhin na um, ginagalingan mo, gumagawa ka ng mga paraan, mm -hmm. at talaga bukal sa loob na yung ginagawa mo. Right. So, ayan po, um, in every way na ginagawa po natin sa Panginoon Diyos, we should be passionate. Amen. Until we can, until when can you be able to be joyful and hopeful? Mm -hmm. So, ayan. Um, kayo po ba, pagka po meron kayong uh, problema, if you have a big, big problem that you cannot able to solve, sometimes um, um, you will try to commit suicide. But actually that's very, very bad. It's actually sin to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So in that kind of uh, situation, we should be joyful and hopeful. Mm -hmm. Because remember, uh, tayo po napakaswerte natin, nandito po tayo sa sa ilang bansa, kung mamuhay po tayo, nagibigin natin yung gusto natin, uh, nagagawa po natin ang dapat natin gawin. Pero po, sa kabila po, nang meron po kung ibang mas katuspalad sa atin na katulad po ngayon sa may... sa mga bansa ba yung Nigeria? Sa Sudan. Sa Sudan. Sa Sudan. Sa Sudan. Tapos pa rin po, may mga iba po kung bansa na nag-aalisan po sila doon. So, imagine po, iba po walang makain, uh, nakapatay na sila every day. So, even po sa mga mga tight na uh, oras, dapat po talaga uh, maging mag, nagpapasalamat po tayo sa Panginoon, maging joyful po tayo and hopeful. Amen. Very generous to whom? Yan. Um, higit po sa lahat, um, um, higit po sa lahat yan, ang um, gusto po ng Panginoon ng Diyos, dapat po uh, maging generous po tayo. Hindi lamang po para sa Kanya, kundi po para din po sa mga kapatiran natin, sa mga pamilya natin, sa mga kaibigan natin. Um, kasi po, ayun po yung way ng Panginoon Diyos eh, kung paano po niyang uh, special yung blessings niya sa atin. At kung tayo po yung naging blessed sa Panginoon Diyos, dapat po kung ang Panginoon Diyos ay generous sa atin, maging generous din po tayo sa iba. Amen. So, ayan po, ayan po yung mga na, mga highlights ko po, po na sana po makatulog po na maintindihan natin yung ipipreach po ni Pastor ngayon. Um, po, maraming maraming salamat po. Ah, uh, mga Diyos, uh, maraming maraming po salamat. Uh, sa mga mga Diyos, uh, wish ka sa uh, sa pagkayot po dito sa palapat ng mga Diyos. Mga mga Diyos, maraming maraming salamat po. Ang kusunong nagagalak at napakasalatik po pa ng mga Diyos. Ang napakasalatik po po. Sa ngayong araw po, ako po ay isang nagsilbing worship leader at meron po kami mga bagong bisita at uh, yung mga pastors ko namin sa mga mga tayo ng dinibig po pa ng Diyos. Maraming pong salamat po ngayong Diyos sa Um, latest po nilang kandalakbay pa po tayo ng Panginoon Diyos at uh, dinadasal ko na rin po sa inyo Panginoon Diyos mamaya po pag may po nila gabay niyo po sila at makalagawin po sila na dito sa Panginoon Diyos Panginoon Diyos, lahat po ng biyaya Panginoon Diyos na aming tatanggapin ay uh, pinagpapasalamat po sa inyo Panginoon Diyos ngayon paman at uh, Panginoon Diyos, maraming maraming salamat po ulit sa gawain nito na uh, naway po ay matawag po ang ilang Facebook at magandang Uh, worship, Panginoon Diyos, Panginoon Diyos. At uh, gagawin niyo po, Panginoon Diyos, ang aming pastor, Panginoon Diyos, na mahihayag ang salita sa aming Panginoon Diyos. Amen. Thank you. Lahat po ng kapitinig ay makitindihan at pasangay ito, Panginoon Diyos. Muli po, Panginoon Diyos, dinadalangin po namin ang panalangin nito sa inyo, Panginoon Diyos, Jesus. Amen. 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 Am
Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Amen. Yes, so we all know this verse, we've heard it many times, and yet often we find ourselves struggling to give the maximum of our abilities in the way that God asks of us and the way that God deserves. Amen. But when has God ever failed us? If you think about it, was there a time when you fell short? Maybe you were at the, you felt like you were at the edge or you were at the limit, but then through some uh, miraculous moment or another, you'll find that God provides you Amen. with even more than you asked for, even more than you prayed for, mm. even more than you need. And uh, as Deacon Pablo mentioned earlier, everything we have and everything that we achieve and everything that we will achieve in the future, it all comes from God. Amen. And doesn't Amen. that give you joy? Amen. 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 And the sooner that we acknowledge that, the more that giving will be natural and almost instinctive to us mm. in order to obey and give back to our generous provider. Hallelujah. And now I invite everyone to give with cheerfulness from the heart. As it says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, He is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask for. Yes. 
His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Verse 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. In accordance with the faith, God has distributed to each of you. Verse 4. For just each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. Verse 5. So in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Verse 6. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. Verse 7. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. Verse 8. If it is teaching, then encourage the need of encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it intelligently. If it is to show mercy, do it carefully. Verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Verse 10. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Verse 11. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Verse 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Altogether, verse 13. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. To get the Lord. Praise God for the reading of the scripture. Now you may all be seated, church. And uh, without further ado, I welcome our pastor for this morning, Pastor Ronnie Domingo. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. For a moment, let me be a bridge uh, between uh, GICM and YICM. Um, to YICM, uh, we left this place at around 3.30 in the morning. Yes. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, praise be to God, dahil yung ating pong night worship, we call it Sipangali, and it was our first year anniversary. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have po as our guest today, the uh, pastors from uh, YICM and uh, Sister Shannon po. Meron po tayo mga mamaya, pagpupulong ng mga pastors ninyo, ng mga elders. Pero po kinalaman sa ating vision about ICM, International Mission Ministries. Yan. So, uh, we decided po, especially sa uh, the to Pastor Rico that uh, they would like to be part of our service this morning. Uh, please be together. Amen. Okay. Amen. okay, let's keep that bridge stand still. Uh, <laughs> Let no man uh, remove that bridge. Amen. Amen. So, for him, I'm just going to say that I'm going to say that I'm going to say that I'm going Amen. 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 And uh, especially at this time that we will uh, spend uh, wonder, uh, wondering and pondering upon your words, Panginoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you for taking us back again in the book of uh, Romans. Amen. As we uh, carry on with our uh, uh, series that we started, Panginoon. At uh, salamat pa rin sa iyo kutihan. Pagkubay po ng English na Panginoon. At salamat din sa iyo pagkilos sa buhay po ng mga 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 Maghari ka sa mga nagkitaan, so bagay nito. Ito po ang dalangin in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, actually, I did not uh, pursue yung, yung last na, na topic ko sa, sa Romans, but I, I kind of jump uh, to, to chapter 12. Uh, I believe this is the leading of the Holy Spirit uh, for us to look at in this uh, topic, which is... Uh, we uh, entitled uh, 
a, a living sacrifice or there is a subtitle na uh, uh, actually it's uh, the um, the trans the gospel of transformation and about yeah so the objectives of our study of, of the word for this morning is to see the difference between conformation and transformation and then also to understand the process involved in being transformed and the primary uh, uh, objective in this uh, study and then second let's look at the diversity of service in the body of Christ among the believers Amen. so ito ang ating focus na pag-aaral sa wangin ito at uh, bilang panimula na po ating mo nang bigyan ng, uh, ng uh, pahapyos sa unawa ay ito yung book ano, uh, aklat po ng, uh, ng Romans so uh, the, the book of Romans ito po ay isinunan uh, which, this is the letter to the Romans uh, whom Apostle Paul wrote the original recipients of the letter were Christians living in Rome. In your own time, please go through chapter 16 to understand that this chapter suggests that there were at least five church houses in the city. So, yung address ni Paul, gusto niyang padala yung sulat nito sa mga churches so Rome, these are churches na hindi po niya founded. So this is a church na hindi pa niya nalimit. So he is writing to a church na para sa kanyang personal na pananaw ay mga strangers po. Mm. Yeah, so this is the context. So Paul is writing this in preparation po sa kanyang pinag-pray na personal ministry na pumadoon. Para mamit sila and minister to them. But before that, he sent this letter. Para advance notice <laughs> sa nila. So, this church in the in Rome are comprised predominantly of Gentile believers. While meron ding a substantial minority of Jewish. Mga Jews. At uh, ang kanya pong primary theme in, uh, in Romans is the basic gospel and God's plan of salvation and righteousness for all humankind which is para sa mga Jew and para sa mga Gentile alike. And then po. Amen. So, Paul began by surveying the spiritual condition of all people. Anong kanyang natagpuan? He finds Jews and Gentiles alike to be sinners, he found them both to be sinners, mm -hmm. and in need of salvation. Yan ang tayo ng Jew and Gentile. They are both sinners, and they both need salvation. And that salvation has been provided by God through Jesus Christ and His redemptive work on the cross. Mm -hmm. It is a provision, however, that must be received by faith. It is a principle by which God has always dealt with humankind. As the example na nagmula pa sa time ni Abraham. So faith, hindi lang yan pinag-uusapan sa New Testament. It was there from the beginning. Yun na ang formula ng Panginoon. Since salvation is only the beginning of Christian experience, now, sa ating po pag Paul moves on to show how believers are free from sin, from the law, and death. Ito yung kanyang gusto bigyan ng emphasis dito. It is a provision made possible by their union with Christ in both death and resurrection and by the indwelling presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. So, in our uh, verses, Paul, uh, righteousness is being practiced. Mm -hmm. So, Paul now turns to the practical application of all 
he has said previously in the letter. You see, we are now in chapter 12. So before this, yung mga previously na sabi niya, ay ngayon, gusto niya bigyan ng practical na application. This does not mean that he has not said anything about Christian living up to this point. Di ba? Hindi ibig sabihin, wala pa siya naman magkita na anything practical about Christian living. No. Here, Paul is going into detail to show that Jesus Christ is to be Lord of every area of our lives. Mm. So these chapters are not a postscript to the great theological discussions. Mm -hmm. So in a real sense, the entire letter has been directed toward the goal of showing that God, take a this, God demands our action mm -hmm. as well as our believing and thinking. So lahat ng aspect po, no? Faith expresses itself in obedience. So, at this point though, having concluded his discourses concerning the gospel and God's dealing with the nation of Israel in our earlier verse, uh, chapters, so the Paul now exhorts his readers to full service in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And then what? Amen. So finally, there is a list of commands which are to govern the Christian's life and attitude towards love, good and evil, and brethren in the Lord. So, so sa ating ito, kanya tinutukoy yung uh, ating attitude towards love and evil, between good and evil, yung opposite uh, sides niya. And of course, how to deal with the brethren in the church. It is indeed a transformed life. Whatever you have, you believers, it is a transformed life. The whole inaasahan ng ng Panginoon. So, sa ating pong reading, Ating pong himahin ang mga verses na napapaloob po from 1 to 13. So sabi rito, unang-una, it is <coughs> motivated by mercy. Yeah. So upon what does Paul make his plea? Ano ba ang pinagagalingan ni Paul? Bakit siya nakikiusap ang ganito? Bakit siya... Uh, uh, um, so mga Romans. Well, the answer is, it is the mercies of God and their reasonable ser service. Mm -hmm. So, let us think of all the mercies of God Paul has explained to us thus far. So, before reaching this point, Paul managed to explain ano ba ang sa mercy of God. Ano ba ang naipakita o naipaliwanag na niya before reaching this point? So it is well. Among this, there is a justification from guilt and penalty of sin. But the cover na yan, out of the mercy of God. Pangalawa, adoption in Jesus and identification with Christ. Ang Romans po ay punong-punong po ng mga aralin, mga theological teachings na talagang mayaman po. Hmm. What I'm mentioning now, these were already covered before reaching chapter 12. Hmm. We are placed under grace, not law. That's the third one. And giving the Holy Spirit to live within. Nagagawa niya ng Panginoon. Especially when Jesus Christ left the earth, nang siya po ay umakyat sa Diyos Ama upon giving the Great Commission. Di ba ito yung ano rito? Binigay niya? Yung pinapangako niya? Giving the Holy Spirit to live within the life of the believers. And then there is a promise of help in all affliction. 
there is assurance of, of a standing in God's election and confidence of the coming glory. And of course, there is the confidence of no separation from the love of God. And that there is confidence in God's continued faithfulness. Lahat po na mga subject na yan, mga aralin na yan, the whole brain na yan. This is out of flowing, out of the overflowing love of God. From the mercies of God. Yan po ang motivation ng pasulat niya. Now, the verse is followed by um, isang matinding hamon sa mga nagpapaya at sa mga taga-Romans. Ayan. With bodies as living sacrifices. So how is a Christian to present himself before God? O paano ba may present ng isang Kristiyano ang kanyang sarili before God? Sabi dito, as a living sacrifice. Sabi dito, no? Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. Holy, acceptable to God. It is best to see the body here as a reference to our entire being. It's not just the physical body na pwede mong kurutin or mahawakan, but the entire being. So whatever we say about our spirit, our soul, our flesh, and our mind, we know that they all live in each of our bodies. Diba? When we give the body to God, the soul and spirit go with it. So present your bodies meant, means that God wants you. Not just your work. Not just your work. Take no. You may do all kinds of work for God. But never give Him yourself. Hindi sa patyon na yung kaya mo gawin, yung lang iyalay mo sa Panginoon. Your own self, no. When you give, as sabi nito, your bodies, as a living sacrifice, it is your entirety. Lahat ang napanggit natin. Your mind, your flesh, your soul, your spirit, lahat dyan iaalay mo sa Panginoon. In the Old Testament, the sacrifice of an animal was reasonable service. Diba? You'll find in our Bible studies, napakaraming form of sacrifices ng Old Testament. At times, you would count thousands of rams or mga kung ano-anong livestock ang inaalay nila. But only for the one bringing the sacrifice, not for the sacrifice itself. So under the new covenant, we have far greater mercies. Kaya kung binigit ka nila yung lahat ng mercy ng Panginoon na kanyang pinagalot na sa atin, is for us to appreciate that because of what God has given us, then we will see grabe yung mercy ng Panginoon. So it is reasonable to offer a far greater sacrifice. Di ba? Dahil sa ginawa ng Panginoon na yan, it deserves a far greater sacrifice. We have to present ourselves as a living sacrifice. Hindi na pwede kailangan mag, you know, magkate ng libu-libong rams or mga baka or tupa kong din. Ang hamon po dito is for us believers to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Present your bodies as living sacrifices. So which is your reasonable service. In some version, it is reasonable or spiritual service. Therefore, I urge you, means that the will is to be the master over the body. So the thinking of our age, ano ba, ano ba ang mentalidad ng ating panahon? It says that our body must tell 
the will what to do. No? Yun ang ano ng flesh eh. Yun ang kalakalakalakaraday ng mundo. The body is telling the will kung gagawin. Kanya ginitikta. Because of the, the pressure, the demand around us, the flesh is trying to influence the will. Ito ang gawin ko, ito ang trending, ito ang nauuso, ito ang nababanahon. Mm -hmm. This is what's on. Yun ang ginitikta ng flesh sa will, sa mind. In this corrupt age. But the Bible says that our will must bring the body as a living sacrifice to God. Living sacrifice, ano ka bunuhan niyan? An offering that is living. Not dead. In contrast to dead animal sacrifices. Or perhaps living in the sense of having the new life of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. It is termed as living because you have the Holy Spirit. The body is a wonderful servant. Yes, it is. Ang dami nito masisipag na tumanggagawa, isn't it? The body is a wonderful servant, but a terrible master. Amen. The body is a terrible master. It cannot be our master. Keeping it at God's altar as a living sacrifice keeps the body where it should be. So, the sacrifice is living because it is brought alive to the altar. And then, the sacrifice is living because it stays alive at the altar. It is ongoing. Diba? Yeah. You are holy priest, you are the temple of God. Lahat yan, taglay natin. But when we are being offered, hindi naman tayo pinapatay. But we are alive. In service in Christ, we are active. We remain alive. This is your true and proper worship. So the Greek word translated true and proper. The Greek word is logikos. Is sometimes rendered as reasonable or appropriate or spiritual. Here, it indicates actions that are not merely external rituals. This is in our time, when you offer yourself as a living sacrifice, it is no longer the kind of ritual nothing na babasa ng Old Testament. But it involves the heart, the mind, and will in worship and in obedient service. Yan ang pwede mong gawin. That is the practical thing. Hindi porke you make yourself so clean, so prepared, blameless, and then you can say you're worth a worthy sacrifice. Hindi na ito in-expect sa atin. But we should be a living sacrifice. Kasi we have a big task ahead of us, di ba? Sa atin ibinili niyo mo na yung yung uh, yung uh, big task of sharing the word. So if you are dead, if you are not living, you cannot do that. You cannot share the word. You need to be a living, acceptable sacrifice. With bodies as living sacrifices. Romans 12, 2, as we go on. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve that God, what God's will is, is good, pleasing, and perfect will. Not conform to the world. Let me define for a moment conform. Conform is to fashion or shape one thing like another. This verb has more special reference to what is transitory, to be changeable, and to be unstable. 
that's according to fine. So this warns us that the world system, the popular culture and manner of thinking that is in rebellion against God will try to conform us to its ungodly pattern. Mas malakas po ang influensya of what you see around us. Napakalakas po. It will try to pull us to ungodly pattern. They look good. Yeah. They sound good and reasonable. But ungodly pattern sometimes comes in this complex way. Di ba? So, what we need to do is to resist that. Yan po ang calling. We need to resist this pulling power tayo, na tayo po yung may influensya ng ungodly pattern. So, yung conformity is yung pagkikibagay o pagkikisabay, pagkikiayon sa takbo ng, ng mundo. The command to us is do not conform any longer. Kung ang iyong nakaraan, you conform, sabi nito, do, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Di pa kami. Mananampak tayo na. That was your past. Pero ngayon, ito na. Ito na yung utos sa atin. But be transformed by mind renewal. So ito naman yung pangalawang word, which is transform. Transform is a uh, To change into another form, as uh, used here in Romans uh, 12 to, it is to undergo a complete change. Complete change, which under the power of God will find expression in character and in conduct. So, so walang nagpapit na physical labinas, ano? Ang expression daw ng pag change is character and conduct. Hindi sa yung pananamit, hindi sa yung hairstyle, hindi sa pinaimprove mong ilo or <laughs> or pouting lips. Dati wala naman kletching ngayon, meron na. It's not about the physical change, but it's about character and conduct. I don't want to be conformed to this world. I want to be transformed. That could be your statement, di ba? I don't want to be conformed to this world. I want to be transformed. But you ask me, how do I do it, Pastor? Paano ba? The answer is by the renewing of your mind. Sabi na? By the renewing of your mind. So the problem with many Christians is they live life based on feelings or they are only concerned about doing. This is the opposite of being conformed to this world. So you see the battleground between conforming to the world and being transformed is within the mind of the believer. It is the conflict between these two, to conform and to be transformed, ay nangyayari po sa ating mind. That's why Christians must think differently. The life based on feelings, it says, how do I feel today? How do I feel my job? Is it time to change? How do I feel my wife? Is it time to change? Is it time to... But how do I feel about worship? How do I feel about the preaching of the pastor? This life, by feeling, will never know the transforming power of God. If this is our attitude, we will never witness or understand the transforming power of God because it ignores the renewing of the mind. We use our eyes. We use. We depend on what we see. We depend on our senses, on what we smell. Of course, kanina when we enter the villa, anong amoy? Amoy sopas? 
with a twist. <laughs> yeah. Hindi, Pastor, ano po yan? Renas, pakunong ka kami yun. <laughs> yeah, praise God po sa akin itong uh, feast na pinagalor ka kagabi at sa kwento ng mga kapatira. Uh, praise be to God. So the life based on feeling uh, says ganun nga. Uh, really, it enjoys, uh, it ignores the renewing of the mind. Iba ang focus niya. It does not reach the mind. Be transformed means by the renewing of your mind. What's your name, mind? <clears throat> it is the thought and will as they relate to morality. That is the heart of the mind. It relates to morality. The Old Testament talks a lot about morality apart from many things in the law. But until now, any issue, any command, any law about morality, it still applies to our time, to our age. Amen. We need to observe them. Transform. This is the ancient Greek word metamorpho. Metamorpho. It is describing a metamor metamorphosis. Yeah? The same word is used to describe Jesus in his transfiguration. Mm. You can see that in Mark 9, verse 2 to 3. When we were in uh, Israel last, uh, last December, we went up to this mountain. They call this, this is the mountain of transfiguration. Mm. This is where this took place. So it's, it's a big blessing to be there for the of course, you will not go there to witness the transfiguration. But being there and trying to look upon the Word of God is such a wonderful feeling. For this is a such a glorious transformation that how the Bible describes it is so wonderful. For. So being transformed is going through a metamorphosis. The only place where Paul uses this word for transform is in 2 Corinthians 3.18. Let's look at that verse. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, as are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. For Paul, this transformation of and renewing of our minds takes place as we behold the face of God. Amen. Amen. It will only take place when you spend time in His glory. Yeah, we need to go deeper. Right. We need to spend time in His glory. Why there no time of prayer? Why there no quiet times? Why there no time of reflection? We need to spend time in His glory and see the things that God has and has gone through. <clears throat> Amen, Paul? Amen. That's what being transformed is. It is <clears throat> through the renewal of the mind. Mm. Yeah. So, as we proceed, ano ba ang purpose ng Transformation. What is the purpose of transformation? He begins with the plea to present their bodies as living sacrifices and to be transformed by the renewing of their minds so that they can prove and demonstrate in themselves that the will of God is good, it is acceptable, and perfect. Amen. That's according to the verse that we have read, isn't it? Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That is the purpose of going through transformation. How do you serve the body of Christ? As we carry on from verse 3, Sir God, welcome to Pastor Dan. Uh, 
Hanggang po. Pasod lang po para ma Abu Dhabi. Why is it? And, and, bro? Margaret Mark. Margaret Mark. Welcome po sa ating gawain. Uh, amen. Amen As we carry on, we're looking at the Word of uh, God in uh, Romans 12, uh, 1 to 13. We are now in verse 3. Yeah. Serve God as members of one body. With humility, in all seriousness, for what we are comes from God. And that is in accordance with the faith. The power given by God to its believer to fulfill various ministries in the church. Yung po ang kalooban ng Panginoon. So God has distributed. So since the power comes from God, there can be no basis for a superior attitude or self-righteousness. The power did not come from your senior pastor, from your head pastor. No, it came from God. You did not earn that because you are so talented and you are so good. Wala kang basis to claim or behave with that superior attitude. Mm. Diba? No one can stand self-righteous. Wala kang pwedeng ipagmalaki. Because it is God who distributed all these blessings. Pastor, can you use me? You can use me, Pastor. Malawak po ang experience ko as a thesis critic. Magaling po akong magtukoy ng mga mali. Experience po ako niya. You can use me, Pastor. In the church, we need encouragers. We need talent builders. We need peacekeepers. We need prayer warriors. Amen. Amen? So, if you are in the business of finding fault of others, then this is not the place. This is just not the place. As it is, it is already a rehab. The church is already a rehab. A hospital. A recovery center. And for some, a school. I remember my boss in Egypt. He always say, oh, I, I thought I put up a business. No, I put up a school. Because you are all student engineers and student architects. You are learning from this project. This is how we see things. So I put up a school. We put up a school. But the church is a body of believers, a body of broken people. A body of believers that maraming pinagkataala, maraming problema. With a past na hindi mo pwedeng ma-describe. Ito ang nature ko ng church. But thanks be to God sa kanya kong pag-distribute ng kanyang kabutihan, ng kanyang blessing sa body, sa church. So, with appreciation for the diversity in the church, which is in verse verses 4 to 5, let's look at this. Just as each one of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Amen. Amen, Paul. So, what illustration shows our dependence upon each other in the church? Ano bang favorite ni Paul na nagamitin? Diba, yung members of a body? Mm. This is one of his favorite na gamitin. The dependence upon its other in the church. Members of a body. Members of a church. Paul likens Christians to members of a human body. So, there are many members and each has a different function. But all are needed for the health of the body. Amen. Let's remember that. Mm. Lahat po may kahuluan dito. Lahat kayo mayroong purpose dito. Lahat tayo mayroong pwedeng ibahagi sa church. Mm. For the body to be healthy. Right. So the emphasis is on 
diversity with unity. Di ba? Kahit diverse tayo, but we are one in Christ. Amen. Christ brings us together in the area of unity. It was one of Paul's favorite metaphors in church. Particularly if you will go sa 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12 talks about this. That shows us that the church is more than an organization. Ang church po hindi lang porque merong structure, may pastor, merong elder, may deacon, may mga officers, merong treasurer, lahat siya meron. May news pa sa church. Di ba parang meron eh no? They claim news daw sila. So, we're not just an organization. So, it is a functioning body na kailangan may buhay. It breathes, it moves, it feels, it acts. Di ba? So, dapat huwag tayong bulag-bulagan o binibigyan sa ating kapatid sa church. We should be sensible. We should hear. We should be able to to understand by his looks or by his appearance what he could have done. Yeah? Right. The church is a living organism. Every person, how many organs you have? Any guess? Too many? Too many. Good guess. Too many. Each person has 78 organs in them. So, it is not just an organization of body parts na binuo, di ba? But rather, these parts are, interde are interdependent in kanilang function. And they are directed by the head. Di ba? <clears throat> this causes the body not only to live, but also to function. Yeah? So yung katawang ito, it has all these 78 organs, hindi lang para mabuhay at magpataba. No? Can we replace that? This body, meron siyang different parts na yung lahat ng function nito ay merong interrelationship. Diba? Hindi ka lang basta gumagawa gano'n ng walang katuturan, di ba? The mind directs, especially in this situation, I have to be a bit postured and organized. Although I cannot control my tongue. But also, it needs to function properly, di ba? Amen. So, when a person is not functioning properly, maybe your boss will say, Are you on drugs? May gano'n. Lasing ka ba? If you're not on your senses, kung meron something is wrong na hindi nagpapaction, kung umikay ka ka, then somebody will notice, ano nga sa paa mo? Parang gano'n yun. So, all these organs must function according to the dictate of the head. As long as the head is meron tamang kalagayan. Members do not have the same function. Sabi nga ng verse 4, it's not just you have a body of working members, it is not just an organization of busy parts na gumikilos. It is that you have a body of members who work together. Diba? Mm -hmm. These parts, kailangan, they should work together. May mga bagay na kailangan mong gawin using your hands. Sometimes, hindi ka naman pwede magbuhat ng isang bagay na ang combination mo ay kamay at saka yung ulo. But for some, they use it, ano? Pwede rin. But things will be more proper if they are commanded by the head in the right way. Otherwise, it's not safe and it's not fruitful. Um, <clears throat> can I have water break? Water break. You can also have your water break. <laughs> if you have in your body a part that is moving by itself, 
and they can come on the brain and something is wrong. Something is very wrong. You might have chaos or something that is dangerous to itself and others. Diba? Bakit when you when you ride in a car but hindi nakalabas yung kamay sa mimintana but naka naka, naka pirmis sa loob, di ba? It's for your own safety. There are things nothing ginagawa because they need to be in the normal condition. But if a body works together under the oversight of its head and its coordination, then we will have a wonderful thing, di ba? I have a watch. You know, I, I just researched that a uh, simple watch is comprised of 130 parts. 130 parts. <clears throat> All these 130 parts working together just to give us one thing, which is time. I came here with a car. The car is comprised of 30,000 parts. All these 30,000 parts functioning for one purpose, to bring me here. Hindi naman sila nag-work ng kanakanya na naiiwan yung gulong doon, naiiwan yung mga dito, di ba? It worked coordinately. In the case of the car, it's a computer, di ba? And they control that. And of course, you being the driver, yung mga nivela managed to bring you here. That's only a car. But if Pastor came here in a jet plane, Jet plane, at kung lalo kung malaki, Boeing 747, it has 6 million parts. An airplane with 6 million parts, with one purpose of getting people bring from one place to the other, but working in a synchronized manner. Imagine these things. Parang ganyan po yung katawan ng tao. And this is how Paul is using the members of the body. Ganyan describe, ganyan dapat mag-function ng church. Lahat ng parts mayroong purpose. Mayroong particular purpose para ma-achieve po yung objective. Lahat po ng parts mayroong role. If this church is comprised of 40 attendees or family or members, then all 40 must do their role to operate as a body. Amen. Diba? You did not come here as a spectator para manood ng, ng isang show, no. Or, or para panoorin yung mga uh, ating mga uh, UPM para mag-perform ang ganda. No, this is not the design of God. You are here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. We all come here with a role to perform. Yeah. So, in the context of membership, can anyone say, uh, Pastor, na po natin tanggapin si member uh, ABC. Kasi po, redundant. Yung pong talent niya, meron na po tayo. <laughs> uh, may ganun ba? <laughs> Pastor, marami na po tayong kritik. Huwag na po tayong mag... <laughs> Tanggap ng more kritik. Marami na po tayong food tasters. At, uh, malalaki na rin po sila. At marami na po tayong members sa grievance committee. I hope they are really solving the grievances. <laughs> or they are the cause of the grievance. Marami po tayong promising members. Marami po tayong promising members. At marami din po sa church ng mga newscaster. Kailangan ba na newscaster sa church? <laughs> Members, we must function as per God's design. We are parts of the body. We are parts of the church. We have a role to perform. But we are one, members of one another. That is verse 5. So in Christ, we are both. We who are many form one body, and its member belongs to all the others. Ang ganda pa ng design ng church, ano yung... We are here para ano yun? 
Magpanakasan ganito, yun ang inyong purpose eh. Hindi yung you are here because you know that ikaw yung manibela ng church, you are so proud. No, ikaw yung nagda, nagda, nagdadala ng direksyon sa church. You think you are, ikaw yung apat na gulong ng church, kaya the church stands on you. No, no one can claim that. We are all our parts performed. Para mag perform ng maayos for the church. In Christ, the key to Paul's concept of uh, Christian unity is uh, that uh, it is only in Jesus Christ that any unity in the church is possible. And, and to the all, unity is actually spiritually based. It is spiritually based. It's difficult, I would say impossible, for unity among members na may kanya-kanyang mentality, may kanya-kanyang pag-iisip and free will para magkasundo sa isang cause. No? There has to be a spirit in us that is driving us to look upon Jesus and that's what unites us. You know? Now the kind of meeting that we will uh, be having today is not because we are so experience and we know what we are doing. No. We are here because we know that Christ is leading us. Christ is giving us a spiritual guidance. That spirit of unity upag tayo po magka mag-usap. Let's see kung ano po maganda rin ang sa church. Napaka-important po ng unity in the church. And uh, with zeal, no matter what our gifts, this is now moving to six, uh, 6 to 8, we are reminded that prophecy in the biblical understanding is not necessarily foretelling or is a strictly predictive, in a predictive sense. Let's see uh, verse 6. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Ang tali po katuluan dito. Napakaraming guidance sa atin in the ministry. If you look at ministry in a broader picture, it is, parang titignan mo, it's just simply serving in practical ways. Parang ganun mo na sa isa summarize, ano? But Paul sees this as an important ministry from the Holy Spirit. Yeah? In the end, kinalaga, you, you call the church international Christian ministries. Ah, we have so many ministries. We do this outreach, we do home Bible studies, we do so many things, visitation, evangelism, and so on, and so forth. We thought, yun na yun, yung, yung what you serve sa area na yun. But there is a more important dimension to this. We need to see that the ministry is from the Holy Spirit. Amen. We cannot do this on our own. It will not prosper on its own. It will rely on our strength. Diba? So, teaching. This has in mind instruction. While exhortation encourages people to practice what they have been taught, both are necessary for a healthy Christian life. Importante po sa isang iglesia na lumalago tayo in our education. Education meaning learning the Word of God. Discovering who Christ is. Diba? Learning to know Him more. That is our form of education. That is how teaching is, is applied in the church. Part po ng paglago ng isang mananang bataya. We have to be part or submissive sa teaching po ng ating mga pastors and elders. Yeah, so those who are thought but not exhorted become fat sheep that only take in and they never live the Christian life. If you are just receptive, 
you know, collect one and a half and then you need more. But you are not living it out on a daily basis. Ay nag-iimpak ka lang ng kaalaman sa iyo sarili. Wala ko itong saysay. Those who are exhorted but not thought become excited. They become active but they have no depth or understanding to what they will do. Ano mangyayari? They will burn out. May mga tao kong gano'n, sobrang yung kanilang entusiasin ay sobrang hype, hyper. Ngayon, sobrang sipag, sobrang sigla. Tomorrow, napagod, tahimik na. Now, imagine Christian life, this is a, a lifestyle. Mm. We have to live it out on a daily basis na yung, yung komportabi sa atin. Ito na tayo eh. You can say na, wow, ba yung feeling ngayon, ba yung, yung lahat gusto mong gawin ngayon, yung gusto mong mag-aaral ngayon ng Bible, ng Bible study, gusto mong mag-attend ng service, gusto mong uh, mag-serve sa iyo kapatid, lahat gusto mong, wow, ito yung, ito yung gusto mong gawin. To the point na ma-exhaust ka na, it's not normal na yung pag-uwi mo ng bahay, pagod na pagod ka, ito ba yung gusto mong gawin daily? Is there a, a, a joy in it na yung kaya mong i-sustain? Meron ba rito na yung, uh, I would say, yung, yung feeling na that the Lord is really pleased? Kahit kasi nakita mong, ah, in service, doon tayo dapat mag-excel. Works. Sobra sa work. Sobra sa sipan. We need to be growing Christians. We need to understand this word. We need to be part of uh, the teaching of Christ. Na tayo po'y matuto. Kung dati, we, we are taking milk. Sana ngayon, meat na ba, di ba? Amen. We need to see the progression. How should we reverse? Kumusta naman? Kumusta naman? Last uh, two weeks ago, we had uh, attended a, a Bible study in Mumesta. Elder Chairman is there? Yes. So before they start the, the Bible study, lahat mag recite ng memory verse. It's a good thing, you know? Mm. Memory verse. In our in other groups, wala, wala namang ganun. Pero it's a good thing to apply. Kasi when they go out, then they have something na yung... Dati hindi na, ano yun, hindi na ginagawa eh. But you see, when we go back to what we were discussing kanina, yung transform life, yun yun eh. Dati hindi ginagawa, dati hindi marunong mag-pray pagkakain, dati hindi marunong mag-class ng, ng Bible. So I mean, it's, it's so thick, it's so complex, I don't know where to start, and I mean, even don't know how to understand it. Pero ngayon, they come with enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Sila pa yung, ano, yung, yung nag-i-remind sa inyo, nag-i-recap, ano yung ginagawa last time. Mm -hmm. That is a transformed life. Amen. That is the visible things that we see in the church, you know? <clears throat> And for those who gives, totoo naman sa church, marami talagang generous magbigay. This refers to someone who is a channel through whom God provides resources to his body. Di ba? Hindi tayo uh, marami pare-pare ng antas sa isa area na yun. Uh, meron, kahit naman sa akin, may, meron laging differences eh. According to the measure that God has uh, liberally given to the believers, di ba? So, kung yun ang area mo, na na-discern mo na, try to excel in that, di ba? Huwag ka mag-withhold. If you are that person na tinitigala bilang encourager, or peacekeepers sa church, ay, sa pamumuhin mo yun palagi. Dahil, God bless you with that para magamit sa, sa church. Amen. And for those who leads, this one must show diligence. It is easy for leaders to become discouraged and feel like giving up, but they must persevere if they will please God by their leadership. Di ba? So if you were given that task to lead the flock, it is a big responsibility, yes, and much is expected from you, Diva. Amen. 
with much given, much more expected sale. So, deliver. You can do it. Possible naman because of God's grace. So, what can Aros sa punto na hula ko mga gawa, parang eh, iwan ako na nga ito, parang eh, lipat na lang ako. If God has given you that, that gift to live, you're living mo yun. And sometimes when we uh, look at the church, and especially we look at the figures, and we look at the numbers, it's, it's very easy to, to get this courage sa, uh, sa, sa, mga, sa mga leaders. But we should not... Uh, be discouraged. We need to take heart and continue and carry on. So, mga mahabagin, he who shows mercy, this gift needs cheerfulness. Mm. It can be hard enough to show mercy, but even harder to be cheerful about it. You know? This reminds us that the gift of showing mercy is a supernatural gift of the Spirit. Sometimes, yung magbigat nga yung magpatawad, yung, 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 Pero, ito yung sabi dito, when you, when you give mercy, yung pagiging mahabagin. But out of that, doing it in a cheerful way is parang ano pa siya yung na-level up pa, no? This is a supernatural gift. Talaga may mga tawang ganito. Mm-hmm. Yung mahabagin and uh, they know how to discern kung ano yung kailangan ng kapatid. Hindi sila yung nag-i-echap pero lang kung nag-i-ignore o nag-google ang tulagan. And that uh, for them, it's enough to attend the church, go home, and live peacefully. Mm-hmm. Ayaw makatanggap ng tawag or text na hindi mo tatayingan, no? Ayaw nila yun. Uh, and for some, they will say, ay, yun naman ang purpose ng church. Lalapit na lang, gano'n ang tatayingan pa lang. Or makita lang nila yung strength, no? Then, parang, may mga gano'ng kaisipan kasi na uh, that discourages them to attend church. Mm-hmm. I have a brother, uh, Abel, who raised me a question over the weekend uh, saying, why do I need to attend the church if I can pray by myself to God? Ano bang purpose ng pagdalo ng church? If I can peacefully stay at home and have a good relationship with God. Yeah? This kind of people, these are the ones we need to reach out. We need to express and make it clear to them and understand at their level what about the purpose of church. Mm-hmm. You know? In this place, in this country, everyone is transitory. You will see numbers receding, receding, see numbers uh, rising up. Depending on the number of people, there are So you will see only a few. Plus, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I've been here like I know, 30 years now. In a church, kami sa pagbibalis, ang dami kumalis sabi-sabay. Pagka naman may dumating, grabe dami din. Meron naman yung gradual lang, yung parang patak lang. Ganun yung church. Members, leaders, they come and go. Because this is not our permanent, uh, in a physical sense, uh, this is not our permanent uh, salary place. We rely also on our livelihood. That's why we are here, mainly. But atin po tagalin yung masquerade na yun. Because we are here on a bigger purpose. Amen. 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 You are saints. You are being sent here on a purpose. You are part of this body now. You have a function. And God allows that. God, that is God's plan. So, what time paginano lo when leaders, multiple of them, they go. Kasi yun yung design ng paginano eh. Ayaw niya na yung mga disciples ay idol o nag-stay sa isang lugar. Kasi ang sabi niya, go! Di ba? Go! go. Iwanan mo ang iyong comfort zone. Iwanan mo ang Jerusalem. Get out of Jerusalem. Out of Judea. Out of Samaria. Go to the ends of the earth. Mm-hmm. But for some, na ang will niya, oh, you have this gift, patience ka, diyan ka muna. Kaya mo yan. You can bear that. Itagawin mo sila para ganun. Pwede ka ninyo ano in calling so it comes in different dimensions according to how God bless you right? according to kanyang pagkat <clears throat> I now move on to 9 to 13 
how do we behave like Christians? How do we mabuhay bilang isang magandang palataya? Well, these verses will tell us from 9 to 13, behaving like Christians. Yeah? Okay, I define them. Uh, uh, ano ba ako ako sa baby Christian mo lang. Wala lang ganun na. How to behave like Christian? Ano ba ang expect ng Panginoon? Love must be sincere. Of course, love with hypocrisy is not real love after all, you know? But much of what masculine as love in the Christian community is laced with hypocrisy. And what must be demonstrated against. So, sa context of modern church, church is our family. It's not your weekend uh, uh, social group. It's not your uh, like hobby over the weekend. No. This is your family. No one time we do ago, not just at the time when we are gathered here, but let's connect on a daily basis. Let's grow together. Let's face life. You sing here, I love you in the love of the Lord. But tomorrow, you know, text and text at the bottom. You know, we sing, but no, we sing so long. We must express love not in a hypocritical way. We cannot masquerade here at Tayo Sama Sama na to worship at Tayo Masaya and then tomorrow Kaliwali, tomorrow Kanya Kanya Buhay See you again next week Parang ganun Nabakabog po tayong ganun We must demonstrate through love Love must be sincere Amen Amen Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. In some ways, it is often easier for us to either abhor what is evil and cling to what is good, rather than doing both. Madali po sa isang mananang palataya yung i-avoid yung alam mo ng mali. Okay, I don't want to commit that kasi kasalanan yun eh. Pero yun, forgetting ano ba yung kinikutos sa'yo dapat mong gawin din, di ba? Sa isang angulo, you're performing good. Sa kabila, tamad ka. Ayaw mo lumabas mag-share ng word. Ayaw mong i-reveal na ikaw ay born again Christian. Hindi po pwedeng gano'n. Mahina po yung practice yung gano'n na one-sided ka lang. The godly person knows how to practice both. That while you abhor what is evil, then you cling to what is good. Dapat pareho po natin na yan. Ang ating performance ay dapat pareho sa parehong side na ito. Hindi sa isang angulo lamang. Be kindly affectionate to one another. This is a command that Christians should not have a cold, standoffish attitude. In honor, giving preferences to one another shows that the displays of affection are genuine. Di ba? Amen. Dapat yung ating pong pagkalinga sa ating kapatid ay talagang genuine to the heart. This is a family. Each one is going through the normal cycle of life. Merong nakakasakit, merong namamatayan, merong someone who is in debt, someone who is in trouble with authority. Anything happens. Di ba? This is a church where we are not accepted to these things. Right. We are normal people. Yeah. So our care and affection to our fellow believers ay dapat po genuine. It should not be bounded by these walls. You are my brother all the time. Mm -hmm. All the week. Everywhere. Diba? Dapat ganun lang ating padalaw dito. We should see in this, as much as anything, a call to simple good manners among Christians. So, meron din palang pamantayan among Christians. So, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. If we are called to warm relations and good manners, we are also known 
that we are called to hard work. Ito po sa terms. Meron po rin itong mga trabaho na mabibigat. Ito rin mabibigat ang trabaho sa terms. Mabibigat po. So this place is not a place for idle or lazy people. I know we've been encouraging you that everyone should stand. Nobody is sitting. Amen. Amen. We all need to grow together. We did not come here just as the spectators. Lahat po tayo meron room to grow because we know that while we train you, tomorrow kayo naman ang future na leader who will be standing here. I don't know how long I'll be here because I'm line of four now. Same, same, same. 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 With respect to the spirit, or it is a boiling desire, no? Yung atin pong yung atin pong alam na paglilingkod dapat ko ay perfect. Ito dapat na manatiling kano? Wag yung look warm, lalo yung look warm. Nobody looks likes look warm na yung maligam gal. It's either hot or nor cold, maligam gal. Yung parang malala patay lang yun. Yung parang Laging tabla lang, you know, laging neutral. Hindi mo makuna ng side, which side you are. To live or not to live? Neutral lang. <laughs> we need to make that stand. If we know that what is right, we need to stand for it. Amen. We, live in, we believe in Jesus Christ. Let it be our voice. Diba? Amen. Let's not compromise. This is a country where we have this inter... Uh, Meron tayo rito ng interface with different beliefs, di ba? So, kasi na lang eh. It's a mix of Indians, Arab, Muslims, Christians. Ang dami, ang dami yun lang. Buddhist, mga yun. Labo-labo yan. So, we have, at times, this kind of yung hesitation or yung pagpipigil sa ating practice. Actually, it's possible, man. This is a kind of tolerance. Amen. Yeah. And then becoming more and more receptive. Sure. Nagiging ano dito yun? Magiging malawag that you can practice your faith. Sometimes, without offending other other faith, you can express your your spiritual standing. Yeah. There's no harm in that. There's no harm in that. So this is something that we we must hide, you know. You can be expressive about, about it. So, office, uh, we had uh, a lot of Indian colleagues. Na, actually, the other day we had a house blessing. House blessing. So, my boss asked me to, Ronnie, come, you start. What start? You start. I'm gonna, okay, um, okay, let's pray. I said, so they gathered all the guests. Uh, and and uh, my boss said, Ronnie will pray. These are mostly like mix of Muslim or Buddhist or in, uh, uh, like Hindus, but we are still able to to, to bless them. You know? So you can still do, you can do the same. You can do the same very much. So. Amen. 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 I had this uh, car dealer that I uh, encountered when we were counseling my uh, counseling my car registration. I was driving him with him for one one hour. So we were having this discussion, and he was throwing out a question. I I don't need to hide what I believe. I can just expressly tell him what I believe. You see, he keeps saying we are the same. We are the same. The only difference is I believe that Christ will not be the same as we are. You know what I mean? But. We also believe about this Christ. You have a magnificent argument. So what, why am I raising this? Because who can be the man? Who can be the erase a new spirit of uh, belief in this kind of discussion? Mm. Don't hold on. Because this could be the chance that you could minister to others. Amen. You don't know how 
the Lord will move in the life of others and open po ng doors and window for this kind of discussion na may inibig mo kasi yung Christo na nagahari sa'yo. Amen. Diba? You can plant. Sometimes you don't have to plant yung ikta-iktari eh. Pwede mo pa-plant ka, putil-putil lang, diba? That's right. Pwede mo na yun. And you will see how the Lord of Harvest will bring fruit in this kind of uh, undertaking. Amen. 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 So, I think uh, I'm almost closing now. Uh, patient in tribulation. Difficult times do not excuse us when we abandon hope or patience. We need to continue step, steadfastly in prayer. Trials do not excuse a lack of love in the body of Christ or lack of willingness to do His work. Hindi porke maraming pagsubok dito ay walang ng pag-ibig sa church na ito. If you attend our prayer meeting, ang haba ng prayer list, yes, napakahaba po. And they, they just keep accumulating every week. Na kulang ba ang pag-ibig dito? Kulang ba ang tiwala? Kulang ba ang care? Is this church not blessed right now? Hindi naman gano'n sa so, 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 di ba? But the longer the list is, the, the more we need time to pray. The more we need prayer warriors to attend our prayer meeting. Kasi when we divide the list, you get to pray for one page. Mm. That's after dividing the list. So there's a lot, di ba? There's a lot to look at. So we need to be patient at times of tribulation. This could be a time na makaray pong pagsubok ng church. Uh, well, praise God kasi business is picking up after the pandemic. So maybe yung mga issues related doon at napapawasan na. But still, there's a lot more to look at. To depend on God, there's a lot to see to be raised in prayer. Distributing the needs of the saints, given the hospitality. Now, our care and concern will demonstrate itself in practical deeds done for others. Either going to them or inviting them to come to us. Maray po nga kailangan ng tulong. Sometimes we just need to offer. Kasi not Amen. everyone is asking. Di ba? Amen. If you have that uh, discernment, kung sino mga kailangan, you can initiate. Mag-offer ka, di ba? Pwede naman ganun. It doesn't have to be demand and then react. Pwede naman, di ba, magsimula ka sa ano, mag-offer and then i-accept. Kasi nakita mo na eh. Hmm. At alam niyo yung situation mo, and they have the capacity. So you can initiate. That's being hospitable. Yeah. The ancient Greek word for hospitality is translated to love for strangers. In addition, given is a strong word sometimes translated persecute. So, given to hospitality means we need to pursue the people that we do not know. And we need to express our hospitality. This is love in action. That's the heading of these verses. Amen. 9 to 13. Love. Not just a kind of love na idol, but love in action. Because you have been transformed and you do not conform any longer to the patterns of the world. The Holy Spirit move in your life for this transformation. This is not based on feelings, but this is a spiritual transformation because you rely on God in prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. God be the glory of God. Amen. 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 for reminding us that each and every one of us has a God-given gift. May talents tayo ng binigay ng Panginoon. And we have to make use of it. Let's all use it to give glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. And sa mga maligit na bagay, it can be of big help. Sometimes, mas nakikita lang natin na maybe yung isashare ko is not sufficient. But God,
God looks sa puso ng bawat isa. Kahit gano'ng kalingit pa yan, nakikita yan ang mga naman. It comes from your heart.
Jesus, my Lord, your
sa mga nagagawa natin kasalanan. Sometimes, hindi natin sinasadya man ba ito o oh, hayan. Sometimes, hindi ba naas nagkakasal na kay Lord. So every time na we do the communion, mag-repent tayo. Humingi tayo ng tawad sa Kanya. Because, you know why? If we, not, if we will not do it, there's a judgment. There's a judgment. And it was written on uh, on uh, Corinthians, uh, verse Corinthians, chapter 11, verse uh, 29. For, uh, for those he, who eat and drink discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. So, dapat clear to sa atin. We have to reflect. We have to repent. Because, alam nyo, misan, di ba, may kakasakit tayo eh, hindi nyo alam kung bakit ka nagkakasakit. And if we go on verse 30, this is why many among you are weak and sick and number of you have fallen asleep. Ito pala yun. Maybe we're not doing it the correct way. And still, what's good about it? Apostle Paul said on uh, verse 31, But if we are more discerning, uh, with regards to ourselves, we will not come under such judgment. Diba? So, don't, don't let ourselves to be judged. Because human, we do have our limitations, we do have our knowledge. And, and, if we will see what that, what God did with us, na binigay niya yung buhay niya para sa asalanan mo, ano gabi mo? already keep his part. Repent. And if we do that, believe. We will believe. Like what? Like what? The, you know, like what? The, uh, by the team. The team. The team. I always said this, no? Because it's always marked to my heart. Yung, yung mga nanahaw. Wala siya kinong mabuti. Wala talaga. Hindi siya ng church. Almost all of his life, pala yung kasamaan lang ang ginawa niya. But he believed, he believed na asama niya ang Panginoon doon and he even asked Jesus Christ. Sabi niya, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, sama mo naman ako sa iyong kaya. And you know what's the reply of our God is? What's the reply of Jesus? Today, today, my son, I'll bring you in paradise. Mm. Diba? I'll bring you by my son, tomorrow, not next month, but today. So, so mga kapatid, believe, just believe. And this is the first man na dinalain Jesus Christ sa paradise. And he's a thief. So, nakakatawa tayo dito, let your church sa'yo. And this guy didn't have an experience doing it. Diba? That's why ngayon, I encourage everyone to rejoice. Amen. To rejoice because God did his part. He gave an example to us. Diba? So, lagi na dito tandaan every time we take the communion. So, we will not be judged but we will be in God, in paradise. Diba ba? Amen. So, pagkakay na lang po natin yung ano.
and sisters. For I received from the Lord what, what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given things, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Thank that you will lift them up and that you will uphold them 
and that you will fulfill your promises to them as they continue to be faithful in service to you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for this church, for these ministries. Thank you for the partnership that we have with YSM, you know, through the heading of Pastor Rico and all the pastors, Father God, who are here with us. We pray for our meeting today. Make it uh, fruitful in accordance to your will, Father God. And allow us an opportunity to know one another. Allow us to uh, enjoy your goodness in the land of the church, Father. Thank you. And allow us to commune with each other. Thank you also for the opportunity that we uh, partake in the Lord's Supper together, Father. Amen. And thank you, Lord, for also for our other churches, uh, like in Sharda, who are also having their worship service Amen. at this very hour. Thank you, Lord. Bless them, Father, and also as they join us later in our meeting. Mm -hmm. Father, you know the needs of your church and your people. We come to you, Father. Mm -hmm. Expand your mercy and your love to your people. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Amen. Lord, be with us at the Palaipo and the remaining hours of our activities today. Amen. Be with us all in our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Shall we raise our hand as we receive God's benediction? May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ to whom the glory forever and ever Amen Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, we thank God for well, we thank God for inviting ourselves here, <laughs> forcing ourselves to be here. <laughs> so it's for the benefit of those who cannot um, speak in Tagalog. But I thank God for giving us the opportunity to be here. Actually, we're here because we want to uh, solidify and collaborate our collaboration between our churches, and as the vision of the Lord has started from the pastors and their elders. Uh, I think from the, um, the, uh, the convergence that we had, um, I think a month ago or so, uh, we, are, we are really wanted to align ourselves. Today with me Amen. is our uh, resident pastor, Pastor Pablo. Uh, so he will introduce himself later on, but uh, just for a brief introduction, Pastor, um, pastor Pablo is has a priestly visa, so he's under the uh, sponsorship of the uh, Pastor Pablo is a uh, graduate of theology in the Philippines, so he already had his visa as a priest uh, in the uh, evangelical church. So therefore our church uh, is a uh, registered church uh, with him. And of course, uh, we're supposed to have Pastor Eden with us, but unfortunately, because uh, his wife just gave birth uh, a month ago, so so he wasn't uh, able to join us. But we also have with us uh, my dear son in the Lord, uh, Pastor Daniel. Okay, Pastor Daniel was telling Pastor of I was telling Pastor Daniel to recruit more actors in this church because you can see the intensity of emotions all over the place. <laughs> and of course, one of our dear our brother, uh, Brother Mark. Okay? So Brother Mark is here with us. And we're supposed to have more, but unfortunately it's Sunday because uh, back in Alain, or at least in Abu Dhabi, a lot of them have work. So we thank you very much and we hope and pray that the today's meeting as well will be having I don't want to preempt the whole thing, but we'll be having an activity where um, all the ICM family members 
Abu Dhabi, Atain, Dubai, Ajman, Sarjah. Um, by the time you have your, your, your church already in Umar Queen, and uh, some churches in Fujairah, which I've been talking to, uh, to have a fellowship together Amen. during the coming Eid. So therefore, hopefully, we will all be joining together in that one. So please, uh, set your calendars uh, for that activity. Wala pong uwe. Pastor Pablo. Pastor Dan, hindi ka pwede uwe. But anyway, thank you very much, uh, Pastor Ron and all the elders and all the pastors that will be represented later on. I hope and I pray that we will be all together uh, praising and worshiping in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and moving His Word towards the greater glory of His name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for me. God bless you. Amen. Amen.